So I was asked to make some descriptive videos about this uh, method I'm using this year. It's the first year I've done this. This is only my third beekeeping year, so I'm I'm a, I'm a rookie, and uh, you, you may or may not be well advised to use me as a a good reference as to how to do things. But this is a method that uh, I saw someone else do more than once. In fact, um, what we've got here is a double, i to get my shadow out of the way. We've got two 10 frame deeps here, brood chambers. Those are what we call singles. So those are independent colonies, one queen each side. And then you can see the gray is a queen excluder. Uh, I've used plastic one but you really should use a metal one uh, they lay flat and that's very important I've, I've got something special in there to keep that plastic one flat just uh, and that that's all I'll say about that but you really should use metal uh, because that queen excluder is both keeping broods out of uh, brood out of your supers and also keeping your queens from meeting up and having it out so People ask about the bees fighting. Well, they don't seem to. Uh, they sure make a lot of honey. I averaged here, it seems like I've averaged about the same as I did per colony. So the stack will have twice as much honey as it would normally have had because there's two colonies working on it. So I've averaged about the same. I didn't, I don't think I realized any increase in production uh, due to the two queen system. They fill it fast and they cap it fast. Um, I'm just out here doing some harvest. The reason I'm doing using this method, this is why I'm using this method, ignore the marks on the lid here, is under this little lid here is that green frame. Some people may recognize that. That's a, I just call it a drone frame. It's a drone trapping frame. And, oh, I don't know. Should I go into the details of that? Mites prefer drone brood to multiply in over worker brood. So you can use a drone frame uh, to encourage the mites to uh, go into that. And then what I do is I pull that frame about every three weeks. Uh, drones emerge on day 24, so three weeks is about max. Pull that out. You can scrape it off or you can freeze it and then uh, replace it. I just have spares, so I just pull it out and replace it. Um, so this also actually gives me a, a, a peek inside the brood chamber, see how things are going. Uh, I can usually tell if there's a problem, you know, queenlessness, swarming, that sort of thing. This colony doesn't actually look that strong right now, but they seem to be making a lot of honey, so that's really all that matters. Uh, so that's, that's that. So you just put that little, lid back on there now I was concerned and others have voiced concerns about rain rain coming down in, into this seam there I don't think that's a problem uh, because when I take that lid off they've got that well sealed with wax and propolis um, and I've never heard anybody else complain about that rain being an issue in this system. Just as an aside, I'm out here harvesting. I'd come out earlier a couple days ago and placed some bee escapes. I placed two sorts. If you haven't used bee escapes, all it is is a, a kind of a labyrinth. This is the top. You place the bee escape in. Let me back up here a little bit. You pay, place the bee escape in. You probably don't want to do it right at the bottom. You want to do it above the first or second super give the lady somewhere to go um, what I did was I replaced all the frames in this super with uh, with drawn comb uh, or, or foundation and I left this box because it was not capped and then I placed the v-escape here to my chagrin they didn't cap it all anyway so I I just had to undo all my work however the effectiveness of this bee escape was was very good. I like this kind primarily because I can make it in my woodshop. 
uh, so therefore it doesn't cost me very much. I've used window screen, not number eight, because bees can get their head through a number eight. And if they get their head through a number eight, they can't get back and they'll die. Uh, so window screen works just fine and they can't get their head through it. So as I say, this is, some people call this a Quebec bee escape. And again, the correct orientation is like this. So the bees go down the hole. They find their way through the labyrinth and then they don't very well find their way back. Come back in a couple of days, your honey supers are 99.9% .9 bee free. I've done, what have I done? Four of these stacks so far. Two with the Quebec bee escapes. Two with this style. Uh, the same idea. This is the correct orientation. The bees go down through these cones. Um, I've had beekeepers in my area tell me that they prefer this style, that it works better for them. Look at the clump of bees there. And, uh, but you know what? Today, uh, today I've not realized that because the ones with that style of escape have had uh, a multitude of bees in the supers and the ones with the Quebec escapes have had nearly none. So that's interesting. I was kind of thinking about changing over these, but maybe I won't do that. I will never knock the manufacturer of these. They make a fine product and they're fine people. Um, that's just an experience I had today and I, I was quite surprised with it um, based on well, based on my past experience coupled with the experience voiced by other beekeepers. So I don't know what more I can say about this system. Um, I've got 32 colonies here, that's 16 stacks of super. Some of them look like they're ready to fall over, but they won't. <laughs> well, I hope not. So that's, that's about all I can say. Uh, that's the system. You can do this with uh, double brew chambers, double deeps as well. Of course, if you're, if you're doing it for the reason I'm doing it, you'll want to put that drone frame in the top deep, the top brew chamber. Um, the additional equipment required, of course, is limited to these, uh, these little side lids. Those are just uh, nuke box lids that I made for nukes. And, uh, and that was my limiting equipment because I, I used up all those so I couldn't do it with all my colonies this year. Um, but that's that's about the only special equipment. Cuts down on your queen excluder use. You need half as many queen excluders. Uh, just one for every two colonies. Works nice with these little two-way pallets because both boxes sit on the same uh, pallet, so they're they're nice and snug, and you can't see inside. But this is what get the shadow out of the way. This is what uh, holds the boxes together. These clips. I'm having a hard time seeing the screen. And uh, so the boxes are right tight together. They can't move. They can't come off the pallet. Uh, and everybody's happy. So if you're trying to do this with two separate bottom boards, I'm not sure how well that would work. It might work just fine. I don't know. Um, but using this method, it works great. So there you go. Hope that answers some questions. And I hope you enjoyed the video.